What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City preview. This time we're going to be previewing the Wolves match at home at the Etihad Stadium on Monday night. Now this has been done before, the Premier League fixtures have happened this weekend so things will change by the time Monday comes along obviously. But this is how things stand going into this Premier League weekend. Now also just wanted to add, we've smashed past 2,000 subscribers so thank you so so much to everyone that has subscribed and continue to support me it is much appreciated much love to everyone thank you so much that's great let's aim for 3,000 subs let's see how quick we can get there and last but not least i'm going to cast your minds all the way back to august from the return match Molly knew this was and if you remember rightly we drew 1-1 we dropped points uh wolves didn't play too badly and if you remember rightly the main talking point was var because bowley wolves went ahead stuck his arm out Hit his arm and went in. There we go. So that's what happened at the match at Molyneux. So we've got a chance now to rectify that and beat Wolves at the Etihad. So we're going to preview our opponents first. So Wolves sitting in ninth in the Premier League table. At this moment in time, just two points behind Leicester City in seventh. They're chasing a potential Europa League spot for next season. That'd be a brilliant season considering it's the first season in the Premier League since being promoted from the Championship last season. They're having a good season, as expected. They've invested a lot of money. They've got a good manager in charge too. Uh, so I was expecting them to do well. I was expecting Fulham to do well this season. They're not doing as well. So it just shows how well Wolves are doing, really. Um, they love playing the big boys. They love taking a couple of points. Uh, they beat Spurs, obviously, at Wembley. They've beaten Liverpool um, at, at uh, Anfield. They beat Liverpool at Molyneux in the FA Cup. They did lose to Liverpool a couple of weeks ago in the Premier League, mind. But they do like a scalp. They've drawn to us already. They're no mugs. They love raising the game. However, a big problem Wolves are having is being able to motivate themselves for matches around them when they're not playing the big boys, such as a recent home loss to Crystal Palace. Now, if you want to finish 7th in the Premier League, you're going to need more consistency than that. It's going to happen every now and then, results like that. However, uh, they need to be doing it more consistently where they're beating these sides and able to pick up as many points. And that way, they'll be able to cement the place into seventh and be able to even chase Manchester United, let's face it. Man United haven't had a solid season up until Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being appointed and then they all of a sudden they can string uh, passes together and get wins. But up till then, uh, Man United haven't really been under threat for dropping down to seventh. And so the chasing pack that includes Wolves will be looking for more consistency. And one thing Wolves have done very well is scalping the big boys uh, and we're included in that and so we need to avoid a potential upset you feel like a Liverpool away win at Brighton and a Manchester City home loss against Wolves uh, all our hard work over the last three weeks or so uh, it's undone and so we can't afford to be dropping points here we need to be winning realistically we're probably thinking of winning every single game from now um, oh, I won't just say now to the end of the season because it's not impossible but if we could string um, eight, nine, ten wins together uh, in a row consecutive from here on out that'll put a lot of pressure onto Liverpool and that's what we've got to be aiming for and then assess it from probably the international break uh, in March from there now Wolves they're aggressive, they've got good players, they've got good players like Never sitting in the middle one, one weakness of Manchester City is weakness in defensive midfield from their point of view where they can launch counter-attacks think of Leon. think of... Uh, um, Liverpool did it very well too, being able to be aggressive in the middle and win the ball back. Um, and so they're looking for players like Neves, who did it really well at Molyneux, where he could pick the ball up, move the ball up higher, and then Wolves have got the attack uh, to be able to hit us on the counter-attack. They're not plagued with pace, Wolves. And so one important way of them being able to uh, launch counter-attacks would be for them to play the ball into space, win the ball, and uh, win things like free kicks, set pieces, get throw-ins, and get men forward, and be able to get balled into the box. One thing they did really well was their set pieces at Molyneux. Like I said, they scored off one, and so they've got good enough players there to put good balls in, and so they'll be looking for a way of getting players like Nevers involved. If uh, Martinho plays, they'll be looking to get players like that involved. And then up front, you're looking at players like Helder Costa if he starts. You're also looking at players like um, Yota and Jimenez and players like that that can cause a lot of problems up front. And so we need to be extra careful. City play with that high line. Wolves will look to exploit that. They'll look to put balls in and they'll look to be able to play balls into space. Uh, and most of all, it's, it's like, it's, I don't want to say it, but um, it's, like, it's like a cup final for Wolves. It's like, here's our chance to show what we can do. And because we've got so many good players that play up, 
it makes it a very difficult and tricky game. So this is a game where we have to be extra careful when we're playing this game. We have to make sure uh, that we're at our best. We have to make sure that we're matching the intensity that we had against Liverpool. We need to make sure we've matched the clinicalness that we had against Rotherham and against Burton. I know Wolves are a better quality than them teams, but Manchester City, when they were creating chances, were putting them away. And so we need to make sure that we're doing something similar in this game. Uh, so for that reason alone, I'd expect Kevin De Bruyne to start in this game. I know him and Pep haven't spoken apparently about him walking down the tunnel because he was unhappy at being substituted. I think it's uh, important that De Bruyne accepts that he's returning from injury. He can't expect to be playing every single minute of every single game. De Bruyne can't expect to start every single game between now and the next three or four weeks while he returns to full fitness. Uh, but... Kevin De Bruyne is full of quality. David Silva played in the last game, so I wouldn't play David in this game. I'd go with Bernardo Silva and see how well he links up with Kevin De Bruyne and then put Fernandinho in the middle. Midfield wins games, so Wolves, as good as their midfield is, has to match ours. And so that's where the game will be won and lost. I'm just wondering if Gundogan's going to play because he has played brilliantly over the last couple of cup games. His uh, defensive midfield, deep line playmaker role, putting little chipped balls over the top and finding the wingers like Leroy Sane. Uh, yeah, it could cause a lot of problems. I won't be surprised to see Gundogan in this game either. There's a lot of selection headaches there. There's a lot for Manchester City to think about. And because of that, it makes the team quite unpredictable. And so Wolves have to prepare for everything that could potentially happen, including having Gundogan slot through the middle. Team news for City. We've got no Benjamin Mendy and no Bravo. Mendy will be returning to full fitness over the next couple of weeks. We've got De Bruyne coming back. Other than that, no injury news. We've got Fabian Delft back. He'll go in at left back, I suspect. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's nice to not have a long list of injuries. Instead, we've got players returning back. And so it'll be interesting to see who makes the bench and who doesn't too. Um, do you remember just a few weeks ago that was concerned it won't even be able to field a full bench? Yeah, long in the distance that now. Uh, so in terms of score prediction, it's difficult this. Uh, City have scored 16 goals in the last couple of cup games, but we're going up against quality now. Not play at teams like Rotherham and Burton. No disrespect to them, but lower down the divisions, lower end of the championship and higher up in League One. We're talking a top of that top half Premier League side now that's in good form that like playing big boys. So it'll be very difficult. I've gone for 3-0 Manchester City. I'm confident if we can play this game properly and cut out our defensive mistakes, the only way Wolves will get in is through us making mistakes. I know it sounds uh, ridiculous and disrespectful to Wolves that they haven't got the quality to get in and around, but Manchester City, we don't make that many mistakes. But when we do make mistakes, you notice that we make mistakes, and that's the way in. One mistake can lead to another, and so that's the way Wolves are going to go about it. Because if Manchester City are in top form and they're not making mistakes, you'll get beaten, you'll get beat comprehensively. Like Burton, like Rotherham, they didn't have the quality to force the mistakes out of Manchester City. Man City had the quality to force the mistakes out of them, and it becomes demoralising. If we get two or three goals in the first half, it's very demoralising. Coming out in the second half thinking, what do we do? Do we sit back, take the two or three in a loss and defend deep, or do we try and go forward? score a goal get back into the game run the risk of conceding four five six seven and onwards so it's a difficult one Manchester City are in top form at this moment in time they'll be full of confidence scoring lots of goals and so I've gone for 3-0 comfortable from Manchester City the key to this game in my opinion is getting two goals ahead we have a habit of going 1-0 ahead and then sitting off a little bit, we did it against Burton, even though we won 9-0. Uh, <laughs> sounds ridiculous, but for 25 minutes from scoring, we sat off. Burton created a couple of good chances. We allow Wolves have a couple of good chances. They'll go in the back of the net. I guarantee it. So it's important we don't sit off. We go 1-0. We carry on. We try and get the second ASAP. And we try and get the third. And that'll kill the game. And that's when we start getting clean sheets. And that's when the confidence will start getting up from the players. Now, we've kept a couple of clean sheets in our last couple of games. Edison's got one. Murich has got one. So, like I said... A lot of confidence there for us. Liverpool, we've beaten Liverpool. We're four points behind them. Liverpool's got a difficult away game against Brighton. One note I will add for this is if Liverpool end up dropping points against Brighton, that will have the, add the incentive to Manchester City to go and win this game. That could be the added motivation for Manchester City to really spur on this Premier League season and launch a serious title challenge. Things could go disastrously this weekend. Things could go brilliantly too. So it'll be interesting to see. So make sure you stay tuned for what happens in that Liverpool game. They're playing today, Saturday, 3 p.m. GMT against Brighton away. Liverpool, Liverpool's lost the last couple of games, one in the FA Cup against Wolves who were playing and against us. Brighton, I think, have won their last three games. So it's an interesting game, that one. It's a difficult game for Liverpool and a kind of must-win for them. And this is a must-win game for us. So we're at a... We're at a a stalemate here we're at an important part of the season and it's only january it's incredible this premier league season isn't it really but we'll have to wait and see what happens so i'm gonna pop up my team prediction now i've got the edison in goal I've gone for danilo to start ahead of walker walker's had a couple of
couple of good games. I won't be surprised to see him start in this game. I'd go for Danilo though because he seems to be our preferred option uh, when we're playing Liverpool. So I imagine it'll be similar this team to what went against Liverpool. I've gone for Stones and Laporte, our two strongest centre-backs. We could well see Vincent Company. we could see Otamendi, who's had a couple of good games too. So, it's, it, like I said, it's very unpredictable, it's very difficult. But I've gone for Stones and Laporte, just purely for the game time that they've not had over the last couple of games. I've gone for Delph, he should be nice and fresh, since not playing since Boxing Day in his red card against Leicester. I've gone for Dino, who's had a week, uh, well, more than a week's rest. I've gone for De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gundogan and Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne drop to the bench. Um, not because of uh, they've fallen out with Pep, but just purely because he's coming back from injury, can't be expected to start every single game, and we do play again on Sunday, so we'll have six days rest from there, so I see no reason for De Bruyne to play, uh, to start in this game, uh, so I imagine I'd, I'd start him, my opinion, uh, but David Silva, like I said, he played in the last game, I won't play him in this game, it's needless, we don't need to play David Silva, um, and now I've gone for Sterling, Sane and Aguero, Sterling should be nice and fresh, Sane had a good game against... Um, Burton Albion, I've gone for him and Aguero returning back from uh, having flu, not too sure how that stops you playing football, but there you go. And uh, might not might see Gabriel Jesus if we don't see Sergio Aguero. Gabriel Jesus, fresh from scoring four goals. It's incredible the amount of quality that we've got in our team. Bench will be really strong too. It's frightening. If we're on top form and we feel like playing and we link everything up, um, no offence, Wolves, but you stand absolutely no chance in this game. However, if they can apply the pressure, even get the first goal, you'll start making mistakes, you can make things happen. Long-range shots, Neves likes long-range shots, we've struggled against long-range shots. Just look at Townsend's goal in the video, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below what you think Manchester City's team's going to be for this match and what your score prediction is too. Don't forget, subscribe, put your push notifications on, press the bell, be notified when I've uploaded. we smash smashed past 2,000 subscribers, let's see if we can get to 3,000 ASAP, that would be absolutely brilliant. Thank you for everyone for all the support. Social media links, Twitter and Instagram in the description below if you want to go and check it out. And I'll see you all again for the next video. We'll have the analysis up on Tuesday morning because we're playing Monday night. I think it's 8pm GMT. And we've got some transfer updates coming up. So if you're interested in Manchester City transfer news, stay tuned for that one. That'll be up over the couple of days. We've got a couple of interesting developing stories. So stay tuned for that. And there we go. That's been the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all again tomorrow for the next Man City video. Peace. Ciao for now.